All right, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. This thing scares me. Never had one apart. All we can do is start taking things apart and cleaning. Put new diaphragms in it and try and get all the gunk out of it. We literally have a mouse nest inside. So if it don't run and don't work, we might be going to a Makuni. We'll see. Keep you posted. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to be perfectly honest, after getting into that carburetor, it was a disaster. So I did meet somebody on the Facebook uh, group site that volunteered to take on a box of carburetors to try and make one. Uh, we will call him Mike for now, and uh, he'd like to remain anonymous because he doesn't want to get inundated with these things, but he agreed to take one on for me and mint. God bless you, sir. All right, here's the official unboxing. I know some people really kind of get off on this stuff. Like, I don't understand, but we're gonna oblige and you're gonna see what we get together. Look at this. Just look at it. Oh my God. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is spotless. Um, he had to produce a throttle body to uh, make a whole one. So, sir, God bless you. Sorry I couldn't get you a video on how to rebuild these things, but uh, with all these stacked diaphragms and things, it's just a little bit outside my capability. Probably not, but outside my experience level, so. Anyway, we're going to go together with this thing and put it on. Just absolutely beautiful mint. All right, everything's ready to go. Car rebuilt by one awesome guy. All this stuff's been cleaned. The biggest mouse nest I've ever seen stuffed into a one pound can rebuilt. Pitter patter. Well, never had one of these apart before. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, bleeding from the previous segment. Oh, that one scared me a little bit. Oh, we've got some friction. It looks like we can overcome it though. All right, so that's the amount of pressure you're looking at. So it looks like We're in pretty good shape, but we're gonna take all this apart, get it cleaned up, and reassemble. We'll see on the back side of her. I'm only guessing. Oh, yes. Look at that. So what I'm seeing here is 
pretty good wear on that ramp. Not so much wear on that ramp. Have to see if we can find those. All right, so our clutch is done being refinished. We've done an inspection on it. Thanks to, once again, Jerry's new old stock cat parts, I was able to get a replacement for that ramp. You can see the wear here in this lip. Something to watch out for when you take these clutches apart. So Jerry came home with a 146-125 ramp, shipped it immediately with the screw. So that matches up the profile to the other ramp, which is specific to the 440. And one thing I did find uh, with Jerry is he said that these, what he calls round shaft clutches, which is different than a hex shaft clutch, although they look quite similar. And I'll throw a picture in of a hex shaft clutch. Uh, he says these don't last for long. So um, I've got some examples, I think, of what he's talking about. All right, this is the outer sheave. This is the 146-084. I did find one small crack in the webbing. Now this is the aircraft mechanic part of me. Uh, this is a no-go in the aircraft industry, but in this, this clutch in the snowmobile, I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, everybody I talk to says go ahead and run it. Um, but I don't think that this is gonna be long for the world. We'll see as we assemble. Now over here, I've got a clutch from a 340, and you can see this one, on the outer sheath is cracked all the way around to the outside. So I don't think I would ever use this. Um, it's right now, it's just for parts. A 340 does have different ramps than a 440. It's a different profile. So something to watch out for is a split in your clutch. And again, I don't know that the hex shaft clutch has had this problem, but uh, let's get you set back up and let's get this thing assembled. All right, so I've already put a little bit of blue Loctite on these bolts here. Uh, let's see if we can make this thing a go. Let's just let's see if we can make a go of this bad boy. Yeah. All right, so we'll torque that down in a minute, but look at that. That is almost a piece of art. Another piece done, let's torque these down. We'll put her on this engine. There it is, I've talked about tracks before. I'm faced with a dilemma. This track here is pretty beat up. As you can see, the belting is starting to give way but it's got the better of the cleats. This track here, the cleats are trashed, the belts are fair shape. So what I'm faced with is several hours of misery drilling out all these rivets and either exchanging these cleats to the other track. So what I decided was, instead of drilling out 450 rivets times two, I'm gonna take the outer belts off the other one and exchange them and I'll leave these in the middle. Remains to be seen, but we're in for a fair amount of misery here, folks. Pitter patter.
All right, so here is the reason they took this outer belt track off. This one has gone all the way through. It start, it's torn out this edge. If we go down here, you can see that we've got some pretty heavy damage. I mean, if this was in the, in the sled, we might leave it, but I have an opportunity to try and take the best of both worlds and combine them. So that just proved to be a little bit too much for my comfort. It's just too much work to put a track into a sled to, uh, to leave this in. So I'm going to give the other belt over here a better look and see if I can leave that one. Um, but worst case, we're going to have to take that one off too. I'll try to uh, reuse the center belt. I can assure you that sucked beyond belief. But in order to get this job done, we gotta do that four times. I gotta say it's the worst part of the project. I've been, I've been procrastinating and regretting having to do all this the entire time, but pitter patter, we gotta get it done. There's no way around it. Let's get to work. So this is the original track with the original factory cleats from the uh, 73 and I think I'm just gonna cut my losses literally and cut these cleats and that way I've got a smaller piece to work with I've been wrestling on another track all afternoon and it's it's a little unruly and it gets kind of tiring so I think I'll just cut these because they're no good anyway and uh, just work with the outer belt so we'll see how that goes pitter patter So I got the outer belt flipped over, I'm able to work on the bench like this. What I did find out is these rivets, they're harder than Chinese arithmetic. Some of Pan American's best cobalts don't hardly touch it. So I'm going to set this up in the drill press and try that out. But this is going to be a long day. All right, so as expected, these rivets are super hard. Uh, drill press doesn't work very good because you can't, it's too hard to position everything. So, works really good is just coming here to your vise. So, you got a nice hard surface to work on. Let's drill a couple of these out so you can kind of see them. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to get the rubber off of this old cleat. That's it. Repeat that 697,000 times. Mint. Three forty track and half used cleats. Four forty outer belts. That's the best I can assemble. I gotta tell you, I'm tired. I'm bleeding, and I'm glad it's over. Pop rivets from here on out.
All right, you guys have been through the whole track with me. It's been misery at best. I'm glad it's done. But what I've got is a finished track ready to get installed. Now I bought all these rivets off eBay. I'll, uh, I'll give a description of what they are. Uh, a lot of people tell me that I should be just going to swap meets and find another, another track to use. I haven't been to a swap meet yet. I've been running off of eBay off of uh, a donor sled and picking parts off of and things like that or making myself. So I have not been able to get to a swap meet. So I'm working with what I got. It's time to pitter patter, get this track into that sled. So thanks for watching. Let's get after it. All right, as promised, I got these off of eBay from Fastnir. 3 sixteenths by 3 eighths, or what they call a 6-6. -6. Large flange, steel stem, steel body. You're not gonna pull it by hand. This is what you need. I borrowed this one. I may be picking one up for myself, but I pulled a few of these on video by hand and I can assure you that it hurts. So get yourself a air hydraulic riveter, mint. All right, so today's a big day. I finally got my rivets in from Fast and All. You need a 530 seconds steel rivet, and I'm gonna put specifications on the screen after this. Get after it, pitter patter. All right, here's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need a heat gun to heat the front of this IFAX up so it goes around the curve. Drill with a 5.30 seconds drill bit or number 21. Lineman punch, a riveter. Now what's key to this is that you have one with a small tip because that tip's gotta fit down inside these holes pair of ice grip C-clamps to get us going. Let's see how she shakes out. All right, so what I like to do is put the first rivet in, and then we're gonna heat things up. Just like that. Put your vice grip on, and this is gonna hold that rivet from being pulled out as you're stretching this around. Once you've got this Hyfax warm enough to come around this curve, like so, I like to have a rivet in place ready to go. Keep going. Now if you get a hole that doesn't line up, you may have to use a tool like this to bring this over just a touch. So you can get a rivet in there. For the most part though, these high faxes from Dennis Kirk work just fine. All the holes lined up great. Once in a while I'd adjust one just slightly. As you rivet backwards, you're gonna come to a point where you need to cut off the high fax. So I just made it flush with the back. I just simply used a hacksaw. And cut it off carefully. So with the installation of these high faxes, that's it. That's literally the last thing I had to do before this suspension goes in. This also brings us to the end of video eight. I hope you enjoyed it. There was a lot of loose stuff, ticky tacky uh, components to work on, but I figured I brought you guys this far. We'll finish her off. It's time to go to video nine, which is the final push of putting this sucker in along with a lot of other things. You should like that one. It's also the final video. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Pitter patter. We'll see you on the next one.